um, was moving to Vancouver um, to come train um, with the Canadian swim team. And she basically, um, I'm, I'm gonna I'll let you tell your story, but um, we were feel so fortunate because we love having athletic folks come and stay in our home. And it's always exciting to see, you know, what people are up to and, um, and she's up at five. So I think um, she would see Eli and Paul heading out for hockey practice early, early in the morning as then pretty much do uh, like, a, well, now it would be an, a, no, no, it wouldn't even be that. It would be an air high five Yeah, um, <laughs> in the early mornings. Um, but uh, so basically, um, why don't you why don't you tell us a little bit about you know why you came to Vancouver and and what your plans were were supposed to be before um, what the awful pandemic that has fallen upon us? Yeah, so in the summer of 2019, I was able to travel and compete um, for Canada as I did the same the prior summer and I was given the opportunity to move up to Vancouver and train with a high performance center and I had decided in the summer that I wanted to change the path I was on and leave the NC2A system and go to Canada and train up there and go to school there so um, I was given the opportunity to go to train in Vancouver and I had to find a place to live and then yeah, so that was kind of like how everything worked out. I was able to find perfect place to live, perfect training, everything was perfect. And then, yeah, as the goal was to train through um, the fall and then January, I spent a month in Germany. And then March was kind of where our season was gonna be decided, whether we would um, make the Olympic team in the pool and then, we had another competition in April and May for open water. So I had two chances to make the pool Olympic team or focus on open water and make the Olymp Olympic team for open water. So I was kind of training for both. And that was kind of like how our season was set up. The big peak was um, March, April. And then, yeah. Just to pause, like his, uh, I used to lifeguard and I had an awareness of what, um, the and I think most people who follow the Olympics understand they there's it seems to be much more coverage of the pool events and and but what your specialty has been is open water and just so everyone's clear she like Kate is like amazing <laughs> and in 2019 in the open water um swimming um finals she won gold for 10k open wow. water swimming and um which qualified her for the world championships so she's and she's a well decorated um athlete um born in toronto originally lived most of her life around the world um and then you chose uh to go train or uh, to go play when you talked about the ncaa2 um swimming circuit that was when you were um studying at the University of Southern Carol or South Carolina, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So I graduated high school and I decided to go um, swim for South Carolina. And then the a few months before I was actually supposed to go to university, I qualified for my first na national team. Um, and so when I originally decided to go to university in the States and go to the NC2A program, um, I wasn't on the national team and I wasn't aware of all the opportunity and amazing things that would come from being on the national team. And that's why I ended up leaving NC2A was just kind of focused on swimming for Canada. And yeah. So you hadn't yet finished your four years of college. You took a year off to come up to Canada. Yes. For the sole purpose to really pursue the Olympics. Yes. Yeah. That's right. That is wanted. your what's your specialty in swim like <laughs> sorry <laughs> um so in the pool i would my main event is the 1500 which is like the mile it's the longest pool event and then for open water it's the 10k so yeah and so so periodically i would see kate coming and going in the morning or you know morning practices or in the afternoon practices you would train definitely twice a day yes 
And then she would always be carrying a bag and heading out to the airport. And she, like these competitions that Kate was going, would be flying around the world to go and swim at were um, for open water. And you, like you, you flew to Abu Dhabi? Uh, close, yeah, we flew to Doha in October. Yeah. Right. And, and the kind of, where, so the, and so what she was explaining to me was they'd fly all the way there, get ready to train, but the water temperature was, what, what, what happened with that? Yeah. So we flew all the way to Doha, um, which is just a really difficult travel day and a half, you know, like we get there, we're just exhausted. And then the morning after we got there, we went to the race venue and we swam in the ocean and the water was 33 degrees Celsius which is way too hot. Um, it's about 1.1 degrees Celsius over the legal limit for race. So it was really hot. It was just a bad experience. And um, I wouldn't, I mean a bad experience because a few of us got stung by jellyfish while we were swimming, oh, but no. we found out the day before we were supposed to race that Swimming Canada was not going to let us race because of safety reasons. And then we flew home the day, the, the next day. So we basically flew there, spent five days there, and then flew home. And stuff like that really happens all the time in open water. Um, thankfully, I also swim the mile in the pool, which is a lot more normal. And we don't have to deal with water temp or animals and stuff. So, yeah, I get the best of both worlds, I guess. But, yeah, a lot of – and then when we flew to Germany – we were supposed to fly home from Germany and then our flight got canceled and we spent an extra day in Berlin. And just like, I guess like a lot, whenever we travel, there's always stuff that goes wrong and it kind of helps us learn and grow. And um, we always have to deal with stuff that we can't control. So honestly, my whole season has been kind of about learning how to deal with the stuff that I can't control. So, and then how do you mentally deal with, thinking you're going to the Olympics this summer and then stay physically strong for a whole extra year? Yeah, so for me, I kind of had like, um, it, I mean, the Olympics, I never would allow myself to believe that it was guaranteed. So I always was like, you know, like train really hard, you have a good shot, but um, it was never a guarantee for me. Whereas some of my teammates, like they knew they were gonna be at the Olympics, like they swim different events. And so when I found out that trials was canceled and that when everything started to unfold that the Olympics were going to be postponed, um, it was really hard. I feel like a lot of the athletes, you know, like your initial emotions are just so much, there's so many that you've never had before. And that was really hard for me because I've never had so many different emotions and feel totally out of place. Like we go from having a completely structured day to just being not allowed to do any of it really. So, uh, I would say initially I was just really out of place. I didn't know how to process my emotions. Um, but as time has gone on and I've learned like what's going to happen and how everything's going to be handled, I've been able to like kind of compartmentalize everything I'm feeling and deal with each one at a different time, I guess. Like there's sometimes I'm like, okay, like one more year to get better. I can keep training hard and make sure I have an even better shot of making it. And then there's other parts that are like, I knew I was in the best shape of my life two weeks ago. And now like, I'm not going to like me and the two boys that I swim with in my distance group, like from basically October to March, we would talk about the grind and like the training we were doing and how like, and sometimes we didn't understand like, how hard it was. And now looking back, we're like, wow, we are really ready. So that part's hard because it's kind of like you've been working so hard and you don't get Let's to see it, it show. Right. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. What, what is now that you've had to sort of scale it back a little and look at another year, what are you doing now today to train and what do you eat in a day? Like, do you have to eat a crazy amount of calories too? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I have to it's like, going. yeah, I definitely think about like, uh, food as like fuel, not really as food. So I kind of eat to train. Um, and then maybe like every once in a while, I'm just like, yeah, I feel like eating this. But um, right now I'm just doing a lot of aerobics, like 
type exercises, a lot of running, a lot of bike riding. Um, we have these cords that are called stretch cords and we use them to like stimulate the swimming motion and just a lot of weights, yoga, just keeping myself active every day and just doing as much as I can um, during this time. Yeah. Cause you don't have a pool where you live, do you? Uh, yeah. Private. Um, no, basically everything's shut down here. Yeah. Cause you, you literally left Vancouver uh, unexpectedly really quickly grabbed your bags and left like her stuff's still downstairs we're trying to figure out how to get that back to um, back home for her tomorrow um, but um, because the facilities in Vancouver had shut down um, so your intent was to go back and then try to train and do what you could do at home um, and then and then subsequently they then uh, are then these facilities have now shut down more recently Yes. Yeah, so I knew that, um, I would have a better situation at home because my dad has a gym at his house. My mom has a treadmill. Um, my dad has like a bike trainer set up and I would be able to train at altitude, which during the off season is really handy. So I knew that if everything was shut down in Vancouver, I'd want to be home. And the day I left Vancouver, there's still some pools open in Colorado. So I was hopeful. But as soon as I landed in Colorado, I found out they had all closed at 5 p.m. that day. So I was kind of like, okay, pools are closed. I need to figure out something else to do. So yeah, like I had the intent of coming home to train at the pools, but once they closed, I realized like the resources I have here are still pretty good and that I wanted to stay. And just during this time, like also for my mental health, being with family and like yeah. stuff like that would be good. Who have you found to be like, I know like you need support around you. You need, um, positive influences. Who, who, who has be, who, who would you say are your top three, um, influencers to keep you focused during this time? Oh man. Um, I would say my teammates and my coaches, we have like weekly, um, zoom ca calls like this and just being able to talk to everyone and like, be honest and everyone kind of talks about their feelings. Um, I feel like that's really helpful because like they could, I can relate to them and the two guys that I train with, we talk a lot and I find them to be really helpful, but also just like my family because I can rely and support from them, but they can talk to me about a bunch of other stuff. It's not just about swimming. So it kind of have, I have like that other outlet of like, Whereas like my training group, it's like everything we talk about is training swim. So yeah, I would say like my training group and my family have been really helpful. That's nice. My coaches. And then just lastly, what do you think your silver lining is going to be that you take away from this? What do you think you've probably changed or you've learned with all these new, new obstacles in your way? Yeah, I just, um, I feel like I've learned a lot. I feel like this season I, I've been able to grow a lot living in Vancouver and just my, the, what we've had to go through from every competition and travel and stuff, but from the virus and what's happened with canceling trials and stuff, um, I'm so much more, I'm going to be so much more grateful for my life. I think a lot of times I would be swimming like four or five hours a day in the gym and I would just get home and I'm just like, Oh my God, I'm so tired. Like I just need sleep. And then I would just do it over and over again. And I would take for granted, like how lucky I was to just go to a pool and how lucky I was that I could go travel. Um, even though I there, I definitely loved it and I was appreciate, like I was grateful. I think even more so I will, um, look at the next time I travel for a competition and get to compete for my country as like so much, it's so much more important, you know? And